get ready to strap yourselves in for a bumpy ride. Because I've done everything possible to make this easy. I've done it a thousand times, but this one, something just keeps stopping me. So in this video, we're gonna go over turning on this machine we just built for the very first time. Then we're gonna go ahead, flash the BIOS, and then afterwards, we're going to go ahead and configure the BIOS, then install Windows 11 onto it, then install all the drivers and do a little optimization just to make sure we get the most performance out of our brand new computer and our monitor. But as I said, we ran into a few issues. I resolved them all and we go over that in this video. So let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and turn her on, but first we need to flash the BIOS. So we are connected to the instant flash port on the motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and flick on the power supply. Okay, I can see some lights on the motherboard. Now let's turn her on for the first time. Beautiful. I'm gonna start tapping delete to enter the BIOS. Okay, so my screen looks a little bit weird, but that's okay. So we'll go over to tool, instant flash, bit locker, not using it. Click yes or enter. So it did a scan through my thumb drive and it found both biases. I put one at the root and I left one in the folder. So I'll click update. So I couldn't tell just yet that my capture card was starting to die. If you notice the bias screen is pushed over too much to the left. I'm missing a lot of the right. And at this point, you couldn't see what I was talking about, what the bias file was reading. I catch up, but unfortunately I can't see what my capture card sees. So this will get a little bit worse as the video progresses, as I find out other things start dying too. I'll get into that soon. Now this is the first time in quite a while that I've used an ASRock motherboard. So I wasn't exactly sure how the bias update process would be. Thankfully, incredibly easy. Tells you on the back of the board where to go. And because I've done this before, I put the ROM file on the root of the thumb drive and I kept it in the folder. The folder was just in case and the root was typically that's how it goes, but this bias is smart enough. It just scans the entire thumb drive. So that's nice. turn back on okay so I will have to manually turn it back on and I'll start tapping the delete key to enter the bias again okay don't freak out that first time after a bias flash it will always take a few seconds at first okay so now we're back in the bias and we're gonna go ahead Okay, so it just turned off on me automatically. So I'm not 100% sure if it's supposed to do that, but let's find out. Let's go ahead and turn her on again. Then I'll start tapping the BIOS, the delete key again. Now, because this is the first time I built this system, I'm just going to feel around. This feels incredibly hot. One second. So as you saw, things went from bad to worse. I flashed the beta bias and I thought, oh man, I killed it, but I didn't. Turned out that the liquid cooling unit was actually bad. I tried different fan headers. It didn't work anymore. It happens. I contacted Fractal and they sent me a new unit real quick. And also it turns out that the memory, the Kingston that I was using before, it had Intel XMP profiles, but not AMD Expo profiles. That doesn't mean it's not going to work, but this one wasn't just yet. So thankfully my friends at Patriot sent me a set of the Patriot Viper memory and it's working great. So that's why the memory is going to look different on a few different shots. So after feeling the tubes that were really hot, I checked HW monitor. It was going past 115 degrees and that's when I swapped out the liquid cooling unit and all that good stuff. So unfortunately you're going to miss a lot of the bias configuration. So I'm redoing it for you here. So check this out. So unfortunately, since my capture card is dead, I can't show you with a screen record, but at least I can show you this way. After you flash a BIOS, always go into the exit menu and select load UEFI BIOS defaults and select yes. Then we'll go back to OC Tweaker. Since we have AMD Expo memory, we can come to DRAM profile configuration. And then for DRAM profile settings, we'll set it to 
either DDR5-4800, that's Jade at standards, that's standard stock settings, nothing wrong with it, just slower. Then we have both of the Intel XMP profiles and both of the AMD Expo profiles. So that's awesome of Patriot to have not only Intel, but AMD as well. So we're going to select 6200 for Expo, then we'll come back over here. Setting that sets all of the voltages here and it also sets the infinity fabric. And then there's nothing else in here we need to set. Under advanced, we'll go to PCI configuration and just make sure that above 4G decoding and resized bar support are both set to enable. Then we'll go to onboard device configuration. Then here is where you could set display priority to either use your external graphics card, in this case, the 7900 XT or internal graphic that's for on die graphics, we'll leave it to external graphics. Then you can enable or disable HD audio in case you have a PCIe audio card or USB. Enable or disable LAN, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth here. Under storage configuration, here we can see the Western Digital 500 gig SSD. And under NVMe configuration is where we can see the Solidime P44 one terabyte M.2 SSD. Coming out of there, now we can go under HW monitor. Now you see, because we selected load default profiles, this is going to get hotter. Once we set everything, it'll be around the 80s. So coming down over here, we'll see CPU fan setting, silent mode, there's nothing connected to it. Then CPU fan two, up here on the motherboard, just above the RGB connection is where we have these fans you see up here connected on the radiator. That's CPU fan number two. Then over here, chassis fan number two is where we have the radiator plugged in. So that's why I changed those in the BIOS. So we're going to set CPU fan two control mode to PWM mode. And then here, this is standard mode and it's gonna work and everything, but you want performance or full speed. What you heard before was full speed and it would actually be a little bit quieter with the side panel. So I'm gonna select full speed and that'll drop the temperatures. And then chassis fan number one, I don't have anything connected to that, but what I like to do is set that to PWM and then set chassis fan number one settings to performance. Chassis fan number two is where we have the radiator connected. So we're gonna set fan two control mode to DC. DC because it's a three pin connection, not a four pin PWM. So under chassis fan setting two, we'll set that to full speed. The pump is whisper quiet, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I don't have anything connected to these, but what I'll do is set them to PWM, performance, PWM, performance. And then here's where we can set different profiles and overclock, or should I say tune, the fans. I'll leave that stock for now. Security, I'm not gonna touch this. Boot, this is where you would set your boot drive. So I have Windows Boot Manager because the Solidime P44 one terabyte drive already has Windows installed onto it. If it didn't, you would see maybe this alone and then you would just have to install Windows onto it. Then you could leave CSM disabled and full screen logo, leave that enabled if you'd like. And I always disable fast boot, takes a few seconds longer and that's okay. And then we'll go under settings, under exit, save changes and exit. I make sure I have the Windows 11 thumb drive installed because after we save and exit, we're gonna hit F11 to get to the boot menu. So F10 to save and exit. Yes, for everything we've changed. And now we'll start tapping F11. And then we'll select generic flash disk much better so we'll go next install now i don't have a product key 11 pro next i accept next custom and now here we can see all of the drives we had in the machine we have two notice there's drive zero 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 different partitions and then drive one drive one is the brand new drive that we haven't touched yet the Solidime one terabyte P44. These are the Western Digital 500 gig. So let me show you, I'll delete all of them here. And 
okay that's the 500 gig now you didn't need to delete those i always like to have clean now one thing i always recommend is during a windows install only have one drive installed because windows likes to write things on both drives and it can cause issues if you disconnect the other drive later on i'm going to leave it for now and i'm going to select the solidime p44 drive and click next Okay, now I'm gonna disconnect that thumb drive. Amongst all the other things that have died already, <laughs> my capture card died, so we gotta do this manually. So we'll click yes here, and we'll go to US, second keyboard layout. Nah, we'll skip that. Name your device. Set up for personal use, next, and unlock your Microsoft experience. And if you don't already have one, just create one here. Okay. One sec. And we'll set this up as a new device. Create a pin, one sec. Choose the privacy setting, we'll just leave that. And we'll skip this for now skip that and let's go ahead decline that and that and one more decline coming up skip for now should i say now we're connected through ethernet and through the wi-fi adapter and we're going to see which one picks up regardless i'm going to show you how to install all of them i have everything on a thumb drive that i need to install on here but in case you don't i'm going to show you how to get to that real quick so first off We'll just open up Edge, and you have to go through all this stuff, so one sec. All right, on Edge, we'll download Chrome. And I know a lot of people are gonna freak out about this, but if I click Start, type UAC, and push this down, and OK, and yes, now Windows is gonna stop asking me if I wanna do this. Okay, so I close out of here, and now I'm on Chrome. So on Chrome, we'll go to asrock.com. We'll go to products, motherboards, and we'll scroll down a little bit and we'll select the Pro. Then we'll select our chipset, which will be AMD AM5. Scroll up a little bit, then we'll find our X670E Pro RS motherboard. So we'll click on there. Then we'll click support. Now on support, that's where we'll find our BIOS. I went ahead and flashed the latest beta BIOS. You don't have to go to the latest beta BIOS. You can go to the very latest stable version if you prefer, but I'm used to going beta. Scrolling back up, we'll go to downloads. Now the way that they've laid it out is actually pretty nice. So we can download the HD audio, the Bluetooth. I'll skip the chipset driver. This is the most important, but I'll skip that one. Then Realtek LAN. We'll skip the AMD RAID Expert. We'll skip the floppy image CC. We'll skip the VGA driver, unless you're using onboard video as well, but we're going to be using the video card here, the 7900 XT. MediaTek Wireless, the ASRock Motherboard Utility, Blazing OC Tuner, App Shop, Auto Drive Installer, and the ASRock Polychrome RGB. Depending on your connection, should all be downloaded, but we can just verify here. Everything's good. Okay, now for our chipset driver, we'll go to amd.com, downloads and support up here. Then we'll go to drivers right here under Radeon Graphics and AMD chipset. We'll select chipset. Then we'll select AMD socket AM5 and then X670E and click submit scroll down a tiny bit then we'll select our operating system I'm using Windows 11 and then we'll click download while that's downloading we'll come back up here click download and support drivers again graphics AMD Radeon RX 7000 series 7900 and 7900 XT and then we'll click submit select your operating system again and then download now everything's downloaded so we can go ahead and close out of here 
go to file manager and we'll go to download everything is right here so the very first driver you want to install is the amd chipset driver so we'll double click on that install and then we can click close here important note on this part whenever software asks you to restart it's incredibly important that you finish up what you're doing and then you restart before you continue with anything else the reason behind that is when software asks you to restart it's made registry changes and other software changes that it needs in order to run properly now if you go ahead and install other pieces of software over that before you restart you might actually interrupt or interfere with the registry edits and the other software changes that it needs to make in order to work properly. So when software asks you to reboot, just reboot. It takes only a few seconds and it's gonna save you a lot of headache in the long run. Right click down here, shut down or sign out and restart. So when we're back in Windows, we'll go ahead and open up File Manager again. This PC, downloads, and then we'll install the real tech LAN. So we'll double click on the zip file and we'll extract it. I'm going to go ahead and extract everything out of here so that we don't have to keep extracting one by one. You never want to install something inside of a zip file. Just in case, a zip file looks like a folder with a zipper on it. So when you click on it, it looks normal, like a regular folder, and it's got the regular structure, but everything's kept in here. So when you, let's say, click setup from inside of a zip file, when it's looking for other files, it can't go into a zip file to look for them. So it can't find them, so the install won't work. So the best thing to do, just go in here, copy it, and paste it out here. I'm gonna do that off camera, so give me one sec. I don't wanna waste your time. Now with all of that out of the way, we'll go ahead and install the Realtek LAN. Even though we have LAN installed down here, we're gonna go ahead and install it because these are newer drivers than what Microsoft has on their media. Next, install. And to show you what we're doing with installing all these drivers, I'll right click on the start button and then I'll go to device manager. You notice there's a bunch of little exclamations and all these signs here. These are drivers that are not installed. We just installed this one right over here, but we have all these other drivers. So installing all of these drivers is going to clear up your device manager. Close out of here and we'll click finish. We'll go back and now we'll install Bluetooth. Install finish and then MediaTek wireless LAN install finish here go back now I downloaded the motherboard utility the app shop blazing OC tuner auto drive I may not end up using those I'm not going to install them here you can if you'd like but I just downloaded them then we'll install the polychrome RGB to control the RGB lights I accept and next, 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 install and then finish and back out of there. And then we'll install the audio. Next. Yes, I want to restart, but I'm going to select no first, finish, and then right click, shut down or sign out and restart. I know that sounds a little backwards, choosing not to restart and then restarting afterwards. The reason I do that, a lot of software isn't in tune with Windows. So if you click finish to restart, sometimes it's still installing things in the background. When you click finish, that process completes, then you can allow Windows to restart on its own correctly. So we'll go back into file manager and downloads. Now we've installed the Bluetooth, the wireless LAN, Polychrome RGB, Realtek Audio, and Realtek LAN. So now we'll install the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition, our graphics drivers. Install. And then we'll select install here. We'll uncheck allow AMD or you can leave it up to you. I'll click finish here, close out of here, 
right click on the start button, shut down or sign out and restart. Now that we're back in Windows, let's go ahead and optimize things just a little tiny bit. So we'll click on the start button and we'll type in power. Then choose the power plan, show additional plans here, and then we'll select high performance. Then we'll click change plan set. I don't know if you like this, but I don't like my monitor turning off after 15 minutes of inactivity. I either raise it to maybe an hour or choose never. I'll turn it off when I want to. And then I click save here. Then we'll go back into change power plan settings, then change advanced power settings. I don't want my hard disk or SSD to turn off after 20 minutes of inactivity. So I'm gonna go ahead, click zero there and click apply. Everything around here will be set to high performance already. The other one is processor power management. Now this is going to leave everything at 100%. You can either leave it like that, or if you prefer your CPU to rev down, you type in here maybe 15 and click apply so that when idle, it'll clock down to 15%. And then when you move the mouse, it'll jump back up to 100%. So I'll click okay on that and we can close out of here. That sets up the system, but there's still a lot within the system. So this particular monitor can do 120 Hertz. As it is right now, default will only do 60 Hertz. If you don't change it manually, it will always be 60 Hertz. So the way we change that is we right click on the background, then display settings, then we'll click, scroll down a little tiny bit. The other thing I like to do is for scale, I like to reduce that down to maybe 225. That way the icons don't look so big in the background. And then click advanced display. You'll notice right here, choose a refresh rate, 59.94, but I have 120 Hertz. So what we'll do is we'll click that here, then we'll select 120 Hertz keep changes. Now your monitor is running at peak performance. There's one more thing though. So we'll close out of here. So we'll click on the little carrot over here to show hidden icons. Then we'll right click on the AMD software adrenaline edition and open AMD software. I'm going to go ahead and skip the introduction here. And if you haven't used it before, I suggest to highly check it out. It's actually pretty awesome. Over here, it's going to show your latest games played. So you could just start it from here. Then media and capture, you can take screenshots, record a video, instant GIF and instant replay. And then under record and stream. So we saw that down here a little bit, but under record and stream, we'll skip this. Here we can choose to record from our desktop or live stream. So we're not stuck to just one method. So that's pretty awesome. Now over here on the little gear, if we click that, and this is a nice one too. It lets you check for updates and everything, but the important one is under graphics. First off, we'll select it's under the standard profile. I want it to be under the gaming profile. That changes a few things you'll notice down here. So it enables anti-lag and image sharpening. Aside from that part, we'll click display over here. This is on by default, but I don't like to assume that it is. I like to check. So AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. If your monitor supports FreeSync, I highly recommend you enable that. If you don't, well, you'll just see it like that. But if your monitor supports AMD FreeSync, maybe even G-Sync, you'll want to enable that as well. And that's really going to help you a ton along with the refresh rate to get the smoothest experience in gaming possible. And then of course, if you want to, you can always come up here under performance, tuning, then you can do additional overclocking and things like that. Card is powerful as it is. I don't think you need it, but if you wanted to, you can do that right over here. Closing out of here, if we right click on the start button and click settings, then we'll click Windows update, check for updates. This is going to scan our Windows install for updates needed because we're on the latest and greatest download from the Microsoft site. This is just the newer stuff afterwards that hasn't been added to that image just yet. They updated every month. If you're using an older media, this list is going to be a lot longer. Newer media, as you see here, only a little bit. And then after a restart, you're going to want to come back into here the same way we just did. Right click on the start button, settings, and then click update because there's going to be more updates. And sometimes even after a second restart, check again because there could be even more updates. And then we'll click restart. So then 
After the restart, we'll right click on the start button, settings, Windows update, then we'll download the latest cumulative update. Then we'll go ahead and restart now. And let's check again, settings, update. All right, and we are fully updated. So you see why this was such a difficult video. Not only did we have the capture card die, which is what I used to show you the BIOS and the OS to make it look nice. It was a little rough in this video. Then we had the liquid cooling unit die. On top of everything, come on, the liquid cooling unit, that's what keeps the CPU nice and cool and overall helps the cooling inside of the system because it sucks all the hot air out of the system. And then we had incompatibilities with the Kingston memory. Thankfully, Patriot stepped in and helped me out with their Viper memory which had the Expo memory profiles. And then of course doing all the editing because of the quality of the OS and the BIOS videos. That was a little bit difficult to keep it as nice as possible for you. But the entire process itself was simple. We've done it a thousand times. The beta BIOS didn't cause any issues in case those of you are wondering the issues came from the BIOS. It wasn't, beta BIOS was fine. It typically is. The configuration was a breeze though this was my very first AM5 system. So I was a little cautious on a few things, especially seeing 115 degrees that just blew my mind. And the fact that the ASRock board and the processor took that and everything still works beautifully. The performance in Windows was amazingly smooth. I attribute that not only to the motherboard and the processor, but also to the Solidime M.2 SSD. Seems to be awesome so far. We're gonna do some testing on that soon. I hope I helped you out with this process. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. And if you haven't seen it already, make sure to check out this video on how exactly I built this bad boy. And coming up soon, we're gonna be doing some testing on this system, some gameplay, some benchmarks, all that good stuff. Stay tuned for that one. Iggy with this bite for you up. See you guys.